So you know how modern toys totally suck? Like Nerf guns. It's a toy gun. Thought that used to be a BB gun. Toys are too safe. We've removed the natural selection from our society. We have too many stupid children living to adulthood. We used to be able to own dangerous toys, like lawn darts. Well, they tell us they were dangerous. I'm not so convinced. I mean, we still have trampolines after all, and those cause like 100,000 injuries per year. For lawn darts to get banned, they must be absurdly, terrifyingly lethal. I, we should probably find out. Lawn dart myth busting. Just one problem, that being you can't find these things anywhere due to them being banned. Interestingly, it is only illegal to sell lawn darts. It is not illegal to make them or own them. Fortunately, I am a master craftsman. Making lawn darts, piece of cake. Lawn dart construction is super simple. As you can see from the original patent, it's literally a foot-long metal rod with fins on one end and a weight on the other. The tip is sharpened just a little bit. Absolutely nothing to it. For the metal rod, we're gonna use some 5 16 steel threaded rod. We'll go ahead and sharpen one end of the threaded rod just a little. Not to a super sharp point, just enough. That'll do it. For the weighted section, we're gonna use some steel nuts and the largest fishing weight I could possibly find. Now the fins actually stumped me for a little while until I realized they actually sell child-friendly jarts. They're absolutely stupid. But these fins are almost the same exact size as the actual pointy fins, so what we can do is just snip the end off comes right off, and we can literally slide it right onto our own dart. And it fits pretty much perfectly. To make sure the fins don't move anywhere, or the nuts on the fins, you know, come off, we're gonna use friction nuts, or you know, the nuts with a little piece of plastic in the inside that grips onto the threads, so it actually takes some force to turn it. Yeah, we're just gonna stick one of those down there, slide the fin on, and then tighten another one down on top of it. And what do you know? We're freaking done. Finished lawn dart. Are these identical to the original lawn darts? No but I think they're gonna be close enough to do some testing. Before we get too far, I think we need to roll the clock back a little bit and discuss the history of lawn darts. In the 1960s, apparently there was like a total lack of yard games, so some dude came up with the grand idea of these foot-long metal darts, fins on the ends, you'd throw them, they'd stick in the ground, and you'd have a, a basic scoring system. They actually are pretty much identical to the ancient Roman plumbata. The plumbata, plum, plum, plumbata, Nice. It was a war dart. Literally the same exact thing, except it was sharper, and they would honk these at, the, you know, their enemies. This random dude thought, oh my G-O-S-A. These things are way more fun than horseshoes. Lawn darts became immensely popular up through the 70s and 80s, and according to a study done by the United States government, roughly 7,000 children were hospitalized. Whatever, kids get hospitalized all the time. Things came to the head in April of 1987, when a man by the name of David Snow thought, it's spring, it's lovely outside, I should get myself a volleyball net for my children. He went to the department store and the only volleyball net they had was in a box with lawn darts. He said, fine, whatever, bought the box, took it home, chucked the lawn darts in the garage and didn't think anything more of it. Well, sometime later, his children found the lawn darts and, um... Uh... His son, who was I think nine years of age, started playing in the backyard with some friends, throwing the lawn darts. He also had a seven-year-old daughter named Michelle. Now, Michelle was in the front yard playing with some dolls or something at the same time they were throwing lawn darts in the backyard. And one of these lawn darts was launched so high it flew completely over the house and landed in the front yard right on poor little seven-year-old Michelle's head. It pierced her skull and sent her into a coma from which she never awoke. Mr. Snow obviously was devastated, and he swore he would get these things banned. A vote of consumer safety commissioners was scheduled, and as things happened, the week of the vote, another child in Tennessee happened to be killed by a lawn dart to the skull. This, of course, um, was on the media everywhere, and it pushed the vote over, so lawn darts are now, to this day, banned in the United States, as well as Canada and a number of European countries. The vote came down two to one. Two people for the ban, one person against. A grand total of only three people are known to have died from lawn darts, all from head trauma and all children. Which begs the question, should lawn darts have been banned? That's what we're here to find out. 
Now I hear you, I hear you, that 30 second montage made it seem like way too much work. Number one, you're a lazy turd and you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Number two, I am also a lazy turd and ought to be ashamed of myself. Behold, the two liter lawn dart. You literally just drill a hole in the cap, stick the bolt through, tighten down the nut, and sharpen the point. Now that I have some lawn darts of my own, I think we should play with them. Here is how this game works. You have two of these uh, rings that you stick in the ground roughly 35 feet apart. It's a very simple game. You throw the dart and you try to land it into your opponent's ring. Let's see if this, okay, that kind of works. Heck yeah! I'll be honest, right now I have no idea why you'd think this is a dangerous game. Why anyone would think this is a dangerous game. I figured I needed more experience with them, so I gathered up my young siblings and risked their lives for the sake of science. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with y'all. Of all the things to be banned, lawn darts really don't strike me as being very dangerous. In normal gameplay, they're almost perfectly safe. As long as you're not standing directly on the square, and even if you are, in a normal throw, they're really not traveling at a great enough velocity. They don't have enough speed. They're not gonna do you any damage. I mean, you'd get bruised for sure. It wouldn't feel great. To figure out how someone could get killed with one of these, we're gonna have to think like a stupid child. Fortunately, I practically am a child, except I'm a genius. I think it'll come to me. Just give me a second. Oh, that's it. As a former child, this is exactly what I would have done with them. I would have thrown them straight up and watched them come right down and, you know, tried to dodge them. Of course, when I was a child, lawn darts were illegal, so I used a bow and arrow. I want to find out exactly how much kinetic energy one of these darts is delivering, both on a regular throw and on the super high stupid kid throw. I'm going to film it in 60 frames per second, so I can slow it down and skip through frame by frame. I'm going to measure the distance the dart travels, going to do some math. That'll tell me the feet per second. Then I'm going to do some more math, take the dart's weight, and that'll tell me the kinetic energy. Formula for kinetic energy is one half times mass times velocity squared. In our case, the mass is 13.3 ounces. Our velocity is 25 feet per second. Actually, first we'll have to convert all these into metric units, but once we do that, the answer, 11.4 joules or 8.5 foot pounds. For comparison, your average 22 caliber bullet has a kinetic energy of 120 foot pounds. We're only at eight. And let's say an average like recurve bow is gonna put out around 50 foot pounds of energy. Not much kinetic energy there at all. Now for the high throw. I did the math. By the time it hits the ground, that lawn dart is traveling at a whopping 48 feet per second and has a kinetic energy of 40 joules. 40 joules! This old compound bow, 40 pound draw weight, also shoots 40 joules. And that arrow is lost forever. Holy freaking crap. Now I could go on and on about the kinetic energy and the science and the math and all, but the only way we can possibly find out exactly how deadly these lawn darts are is to actually throw them at a living human skull and see the damage for ourselves. Fortunately, I know exactly where I can find a living human skull. My mother said I could not use my sibling. So instead, we're gonna go with the next best option. A ballistic skull. This is an exact human skull replica in every single way, all the way down to this beautiful clear yellowy skin. First up, we're gonna try just the regular old throw from about 35 feet. Probably take a couple tries to actually hit it. Okay, well that was a little unexpected. I really did not expect we were gonna pierce the skull with just a regular throw. So we pull back, yeah. Okay, so we got a pretty decent fracture there. I don't think it would do this much damage to a real skull because your skin is very thick and very tough. However, if it had enough force to actually break the skull, there's probably a decent chance it could crack or fracture your skull even though it didn't actually punch through the skin. Also, gosh! That took so 
freaking long. This wasn't even the hard shot. Next, <laughs> I have to throw it up. It was at this point I realized we might have a small dilemma. I took these out and started throwing them up into the air and see what my accuracy was when they hit the ground. Um, yeah. We've got a problem. I did some, you know, head math and realized if it took me about 200 tries when my accuracy was within a circle of about five feet, then to hit the skull out there where I was hitting like within a diameter of 20 feet, it would probably take me over a thousand throws. And of course we all know I am way too lazy to do that. Gosh, we're gonna have to break out the big guns. The fabulous freaking Fabulous. I've modified this dart by adding a hook here so we can hook it onto the bowstring and then I've also changed the fins out so they're flexible because if they need to be flexible otherwise they'd break off. Now we can fire these darts at a set speed. I just got to chronograph the uh, ballista and then adjust the draw length to where we're firing at about 48 feet per second. Now I can literally aim it at whatever I want to and it'll be exactly the same as if I threw it up as high as I could and it came crash and it came crashing down to earth. I'm so smart. How about a couple of milk jugs? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's sketchy. What the heck? It tore it. I have never seen anything do that to a milk jug before. That's weird. I mean, it's only moving at 50 feet per second, but the thing weighs almost a pound. So, you know, when it hits something, it's got a decent punch. I was thinking, what if the dart hit another part of the body, you know, besides the skull? So uh, I've got a young chicken, sorry, premium young chicken, only the best for y'all. And we'll just see what sort of damage it can do. I just have it marked with a piece of tape how far I'm supposed to pull it back to be about 48 feet per second. Bombs away. We impacted right here, it looks like. We definitely need to make another shot at it. We hit on the edge. I can fit the entire tip of my thumb in. Yowzers. I'm gonna try to hit right top dead center where some of the heftier meat and backbone is. Oh, sweet glory. Get a load of that. It's stuck in there. Good night. <laughs> That's like two and a half, three inches. A normal lawn dart would not have this hook, so it would have gone even deeper. You would really not want to be hit by a lawn dart. <laughs> Let's just go for the back of the skull. I feel like the back of the skull would be like one of the thickest parts. Predictions, anyone? Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. This is interesting. I've hit it three times now. None of them actually penetrating into the skull, which seems a little bit contradictory to our earlier test where the much, much slower moving lawn dart went right through the skull up here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the skull sideways. So I have a bigger uh, flat area of skull to hit. Hopefully it won't glance off. Hopefully we can get some penetration. Finally got a head-on shot, <laughs> pun intended. I've got bone fragments. So if I peel back some of this, oh yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's all coming off. That would not feel great. That really would not. Mm -mm -mm. Going off my theory that the top of the skull is thinner than the rest of it, I've got it at an angle so that hopefully we can actually impact the top. And we're gonna go one more time. What a surprising turn of events. I cannot crunch this skull. I've hit it so many times. That was the last hit there. And as you can see, it did knock a bunch of chips of bone out. However, it did not penetrate it. But I really want to see this thing explode. So I'm just going to pull the blister all the way back. Hopefully it'll be fast enough to go right through this thing. Three, two, one. 
glory. It looks like someone died here. That's disturbing. That is a disturbing image. This is gonna get so demonetized. Oh, okay, and we've got spinal disconnection. You need your spine back. Go back on your spine. Thank you, sir. To the YouTube moderator who wants to demonetize this video. They show this stuff on TV. It's on Forged in Fire. They do this all the time. They have ads. I should have ads. <laughs> I've emptied the skull out a little bit so we can get to the inside. It appears that where we hit that first time, the the skull, probably due to just like manufacturing issues, um, is very, very thin. Unreasonably thin. I probably could have punched through that particular part with my finger. I am 100% certain you would not be able to puncture a human skull from 35 feet with that soft throw. Definitely not an adult skull, maybe a child skull because a child is so much thinner. Even so, it's iffy. Final diagnosis, are lawn darts lethal? Yes and no. I think people have way overhyped the danger of these things. It's just a heavy and somewhat pointy object. Like, if you throw it up high enough, it's gonna come down with enough force to hurt somebody. It's just... That's how gravity works. Unless you are literally throwing them as high as you possibly can, these things are pretty harmless. Even on the highest throw, there's a very high chance that it's just gonna bounce right off an adult skull. Which, of course, is why all the fatalities and serious injuries were children. It makes sense. Child skulls are thinner. All that being said, should these actually be illegal? What do y'all think? Leave it in the comments. I just keep thinking of all the dangerous stuff that is legal. Like, all of this stuff. And it seems absurd that these, of all things, would be banned. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll see you next time. I don't know what we're doing next time, but I'll see you there. Jake out.